Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Bob Long, Tyler Galehouse. A little more roundtable style. No microphones, no headphones to constrain us here this evening. A little bit of technical difficulties on our normal equipment, but it also gives us an opportunity to get back into the swing of things as we've had a two-week hiatus and maybe do a little bit more relaxed uh, conversation after what was anything but a relaxing game in the Ohio State-Penn State matchup. Obviously the whiteout was a tremendous atmosphere and for quite a long portion of that game Penn State outplayed Ohio State. Looked like they had a good shot to win that game and really did have a great chance to win that football game. We all know how the story ends of course two times in two years. Very very similar and Ohio State walks away with a one-point victory and now a stranglehold over the Big Ten East. You know, as you evaluate that game and really more so start to look forward since it is a week and a half since past, mm -hmm. you know, what do you see right now? Big game against Michigan State and a pathway to the college football playoff that we'll talk about as the show goes on. Yeah, I guess um, the first thing that I see is um, how is Penn State going to handle this one point loss against Ohio State um, compared to the way they handled it last year? Um, obviously, Last year, they had the one-point loss in Columbus, and then um, the very next week, uh, had a trip to East Lansing to take on Michigan State, where there was about a three-hour rain delay, and um, they also lost Michigan State by, I believe, three points. Yep. Um, again, this year is a little bit different, uh, outside of losing Ohio State by, by one. Um, we have Penn State as a bye, and a struggling Michigan State team comes to visit um, Happy Valley on Saturday, so it's it's pretty similar. I'm, I'm interested to see how they bounce back from it. Um, as you mentioned, the path to the playoff um, it's still very wide open. There's there. I mean, we're really this week marks about the halfway point of the regular season, and there's still a lot of big time games to be played, and and that really starts this week um, with a full schedule of games that you know we could dive into later that Penn State fans should be watching for the score. Uh, never too early to start. You know, kind of coming up with your your path to like the best chance to make the playoff, but really Penn State has to take care of business and win out if there is any hope at that. And it starts Saturday against Michigan State. Well, and you mentioned Michigan State Spartans. We'll take a look at their schedule right now. This is a team that came in with so much promise this year, Tyler, and actually was that sneaky team that I think every single analyst out there said, "Oh, you know, this is the team that I don't think enough people are talking about." Well. At the end of the day, if every analyst says that, everybody's talking about it. One of those faux yeah, right. teams that... Someone will be right. right. <laughs> exactly. So then they have that first matchup against Utah State, and that was a Friday night game. And we saw Penn, uh, Penn State the very next day struggle with App State. But on that Friday night, I think everybody was thinking, wow, this Michigan State team escaped a big blow. If they can continue... To improve, you know, maybe that game doesn't really, it, we look up, back on that as very, very much just a hiccup. Well, then they go and lose to Herm Edwards in Arizona State and, and really have struggled in the time since. Northwestern, you see that, 29-19. And then against number 8 and against number 12, very, very difficult, a season-defining type moment here for Michigan State who, you know, if you actually think about it, Tyler, if they get their ducks in a row, could actually be in a fine position because their one loss out in the Big Ten was to Northwestern, the team from the West. Of course, Penn State, Michigan, Ohio yeah. State all come in the next two months, but really everything is ahead of them, well, save maybe a college football playoff because two losses, it's, it's very unfathomable that, that they would get there, I don't think. However, you know, it's still a very talented team. Brian Lewerke is a tremendous quarterback. They stop the run very, very well. And... They have a very good running game, and they always have. It's just that all those pieces haven't quite been put together. Yeah, I um, arguably Michigan State controls their own destiny yes. with the schedule they still have to play. One hundred percent, because they right. haven't played anybody in the East yet. Um, however, um, some interesting notes on Michigan State: they already had their bye week, mm -hmm. so that's not going to help them um, at all with this final stretch. And they have a gauntlet of games coming up, as as you mentioned. By the way, I I, I did mention they they did play Indiana. Mm -hmm. out of the East. I mean, when I say they haven't played the East, they, they still have the big sure. three sitting there. But um, with that being said, they are a talented team. Um, they are hit hard, pretty hard right now with the injury bug. Uh, running back LJ Scott hasn't played in the last mm -hmm. three games. He's one of the best running backs in the Big Ten. Um, 
some of their linemen have been injured. Their punter has been injured. I mean, and you know, you say, oh, it's a punter, but I mean, punters are a very important part of the game. Um, they've been hit by the injury bug, and they just haven't seemed to gel the way that a lot of people thought they, they would, and that they really haven't gelled at all this season, starting with that opening night, Friday night game against Utah State, where they uh, won by a touchdown, and then they went on the road and lost to Arizona State. The offense hasn't put up the points yep. that they, they – they can with a little Brian Lewerke quarterback. Sure. Um, I mean, he's a next level guy. People yeah, are talking about him he, as a guy that would go high in the for draft. Sure. And be a- for sure. He's a pro style quarterback. Um, and they have weapons on offense. I mean, they have good receivers. Felton Davis is one of the best in the Big Ten. Uh, but they just haven't really gelled this year. And uh, you mentioned their run defense is exceptional, number one in the country. Their pass defense is number 122 in the country. Um, so. You know, you you split down the middle, and they're it's like are they really that good of a defense, which they've pride themselves on in years past. Sure. So something to watch there, specifically um, with McSorley airing the ball out this week. I mean, I, Penn State's still going to try to run, but remember, two years ago, this isn't the same Michigan State team. Although a lot of those players are still in the team, if, right? From two years ago, when Penn State won the Big Ten East at home, Penn State struggled running, but McSorley was going over the top yes. here and there. And ended up putting up a big game. And and back to the point about high expectations for Michigan State, it's because they returned, I believe it was like 21, 19, yeah. 19 of yeah. 22 starters. I mean, that's unheard of, right. really, in college football. So I think that's why the expectations were so high. But really, maybe that maybe it doesn't always correlate. There was I 19 mean, and, guys and that weren't good enough to and, leave after three and years. And there's injuries. And so, I mean, take that for what it's worth. But... An interesting side note there. Yeah, without a doubt. And the other thing about this Michigan State program is that they and Penn State have had a little bit of bad blood. Sure. And last year was the first year of the last three that there wasn't a, a blowout and one team, quote-unquote, running up the score. Mm-hmm. Three years ago was Michigan State. Two years ago was Penn State. And then last year was Penn State with everything on the line. And Michigan State really at that time didn't, Seemed like they were going to be able to mm-hmm. flip that switch and put themselves back into the national spotlight. They did with that win over Penn State. Penn State dropped in the rankings. The Spartans went up to number 13 mm-hmm. and led to a monster matchup against Ohio State. And then if you remember, Ohio State beat them by about 40 points. And that game, the Penn State-Michigan State game, I contend changed the entire scope of the college football playoff discussion last year. The reason why, if Penn State just beats Michigan State, right, then Penn State has one loss, and they're very, very much in the mix for the college football playoff. Oh, and by the way, Ohio State had two losses in the regular season, at the end of the regular season. Their candidacy for the college football playoff, as well as them getting through to the Big Ten Championship, is because they beat Michigan State, and from an eye test perspective, a win against the number 13 Michigan State team meant right. a lot. If Penn State beats Michigan State, they're, they're not 13. unranked. Right. They are unranked because they were a 22nd or so ranked yeah. team when Penn State played. That game, Penn State-Michigan State with the weather delay, I contend changed everything. It, it, it was a perfect storm for Michigan State, uh, pun intended. I mean, Penn State's coming off a heartbreaker in Columbus. Then they go to Michigan State and the storm. And it's a three-hour delay, and I mean, it's not easy to come back from for either team, but it definitely benefits the home team in that scenario. Your home locker room, I mean, you know, the the locker room's nicer, all that kind of stuff. I mean... Not exactly the pink locker room of Kinnick Stadium. Right, and, 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 you know, not necessarily the away locker room of Beaver Stadium, which I can't imagine many places have a worse away locker room than that, but uh, point being, a delay like that certainly helped... um, Michigan State, and without that delay, who knows what would have happened. Right. I mean, I firmly believe that Penn State was a better team, and I think the delay significantly impacted Michigan State in winning that game last year. Yeah, so now we turn the attention towards this week's game, 3.30 kick, and Beaver Stadium will be rocking once again. It's that time of year where 3.30 very quickly turns from day to night, and it becomes a night tilt for the second half. Now, we mentioned the pathway to the playoff. Let's take a look at Penn State's schedule here as they continue on with their season. 
and it's a very big portion of the schedule. Mm -hmm. There's throw a game at Indiana, which we saw a few years never, ago. Never an easy game. Yeah. Now there's no Kevin Wilson leading uh, the helm for Indiana. Yeah, I mean, that it's not matter. an easy game this week either. So not an easy game this week. Iowa is not going to be an easy game. It never is. On the road at Michigan, and then home to Wisconsin. From now until November 10th, now we knew this already, Penn State needs to win out in order to have sure. a chance for the college football playoff. But these next, really, five weekends will be the key with Rutgers and Maryland to finish it and off. Don't sleep on Maryland either. I mean, they are, they they are, not, Texas. They are not a terrible, they are, they are not Rutgers <laughs> by any stretch. But they're, they're better than people think. They have athletes. It's just a matter. They're going through a lot of turmoil yep. right now with the uh, passing of one of their players and also the way this school handled it. Uh, however, you know, I, I agree. These next five weeks, you're going to find out a lot. If Penn State goes 5-0, and um, they're, they're right in it. I mean, they have to take care of business, as we said. The game, that uh, obviously, this week worries me. At Indiana, always kind of worries me, although it is a 3.30 start. It's usually 12 o'clock, which is... Um, it's more of, I don't know if it's central time there. I actually don't think it is, but it's just a really, I think it is, it, yeah. I think it is eastern time. But, I think it is, yeah. um, It's just always, you know, half empty stadium, half full, however you want to look at it, and just, <laughs> it, it, they can lull you to sleep. I mean, we've seen it happen plenty of times. And Indiana's not a bad team either. Um, I think the Iowa, I think the Iowa game, by the time Iowa gets to Beaver Stadium, there's a good chance they're a ranked team. Yep. Um, Looking at their schedule, they have one loss, and that was at home against Wisconsin. They have at Indiana this week, and then Maryland. So they win those two. They're probably coming into Beaver Stadium ranked in the 20s, if I were yeah, to guess. I would agree. Uh, that would be a nice resume uh, booster for Penn State. And then you, you take a – can you back to the schedule real Absolutely. quick, if you don't mind? And then you go to Michigan the following week, which is arguably the toughest game left on the schedule. And then you have Wisconsin right after that. So – you're going to have three extremely physical games yes. in that three-game stretch. Um, and that is a tough three-game stretch. And I, I mean, it's doable, but that is the key right there. Totally agree. Nittany Lions Sports Report, Bob Long, Tyler Gellhouse. Now, as we look forward to this game for Penn State, I think we acknowledge that they have to win out in order to get to the college football playoffs. So let's look at the rest, and let's look at what the college football picture will bring. And we'll look at the top... 10 plus here because Oklahoma, we throw them in this mix as well at number 11, 5 and 1, the one loss to Texas. Now, the way that the Big 12 is situated is that there are no divisions. Right. And so the top two teams will play in the Big 12 championship game. Which, so, in my opinion, hurts the Big 12. Yeah, I think so. And, and they thought it was going to help because the one true champion back in the days of Art Bryles and Baylor as well as TCU and Gary Patterson still running the helm there, of course. But when that year, 2014, came along and the committee had an opportunity to take the easy way out and pick Ohio State rather than picking between the two Big 12 teams, yeah. they did just that. Yeah. And then the Dan, you know, Dan Beebe, the commissioner of the Big 12, decided he needed to do something. So now you have number 9, Texas, number 11, Oklahoma. And they're needing, needing to go up against one another. Maybe Texas drops a game and Oklahoma sits there at one loss and they go to the Big 12 championship game. You know, Texas beats and Oklahoma. That doesn't and then help Texas anybody. already has two losses. Right. Because that, they lost to Maryland. Example. Right. So you're right. It doesn't help anybody. And then obviously don't forget about West Virginia. And they still have their well, toughest yeah. games ahead of them. That's a great point. So chances are it's going to be two of these three teams that play each other. Yep. And... It's a matter of which two it is, and there's a chance, more than likely, <laughs> both already have a loss. How about that? What if West Virginia oh. goes in there unbeaten and then loses to Oklahoma, even after already beating them, and right. writes themselves so right out? So it's like, then what do you do? Right. So, I mean, that that's a, you know that's something we'll have to talk about in a couple of weeks, and that's one of the reasons I, at the beginning of the year, said that the Big 12 is going to be left out of the college football playoff, mm -hmm. as well as the Pac-12 which only has one fighter left, and that's Washington. Um, Colorado's on the feet of it. I don't think they're for real. Um, I mean, good start, but their tough games are coming up. Yeah. Um, but I think that the Big 12 is going to hurt themselves again this year, and I think they're going to be left out as well as the Pac-12, um, with the exception of Washington. That's a team to keep an eye on. Uh, and then you're looking at either 
you're looking at prob most definitely Alabama and Clemson. I think have the two easiest uh, roads to the playoff. Agreed. Schedules um, align well for them. Although the Tigers had trouble. They are struggling Syracuse. a little bit. They are. And Syracuse is much improved. And, um, and you know, the quarterback but was I think out. You, you put those two teams in, and then you – you probably are going to put Ohio State in, assuming they win the Big Ten with one loss or zero losses. Yep. And then what's going to happen with that fourth spot? If, in my opinion, it would be depending on what happens in the Big 12, but keeping the Big 12 out of it. If Penn State runs the table, I mean, Notre Dame is the wild card here, whether or not they go undefeated. And also, Georgia, what happens if they lose a regular season game and then lose the SEC championship? That's two and losses. They're out. they're out. No doubt. But what if they lose a regular season game Win the SEC with one loss, they're probably in, and so would probably Alabama like last season. Right. So let's say they lose. Let's say they're both undefeated. Georgia and Alabama go. And it's like, why do you play the game if they're both going to be in it? You know. Well, that but that's the question, right? Right. I mean, is, it, is there a threshold? Is it lose by three and you're in, lose by ten and you're out? Yeah, that's that's the question. I agree. Makes it very but, very difficult. Um, but at the end of the day, still Penn State's. They're in a good. I mean, they jumped three spots. I mean, this is their highest ranking, actually, of the year, I believe. Yeah, it's very. After, they and moved it was up, after as loss. you see on the screen right now, they moved up three spots. So what's very interesting about it is that Penn State's resume is very, very strong. And if Ohio State goes and rips off double-digit wins mm -hmm. the rest of the way, that's actually a well, good thing for Penn State. And they say that our only loss was a game that we controlled into the fourth one quarter point against early in the season, the number one or number two or number three. Two early in the season, um, I think the one thing too to to watch. Well, I don't know that that matters. Just well, to, the just committee did in. say that a couple of years that you can rebound from losses early in the season. My point is, I don't think you need to rebound. I think you say we were playing well, they were but playing well. I'm we saying are to have a loss are. then and run the table since, in yeah. my opinion, is better than winning and losing late. Okay, so that's in your example that, of yes. Georgia and Alabama. I think an I think losing a game team. earlier does does you better for the playoff committee. As opposed as opposed to losing it late, that's that's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, another thing to consider is obviously if Penn State drops a game, we're no longer talking about their path. We're talking about you know the playoff itself and who we see getting in. Interesting um, to note hypothetically, if Penn State wins out, that would include beating Michigan. If Michigan's only loss in the Big Ten comes to Penn State, yeah. Okay. And they go on the road and beat Ohio State in the last week of the season. There is a three-way tie for the Big Ten East. Right. I don't know the tiebreaker. I would say, and I don't it's, even want to it's, assume. Uh, it's division record, but then that would be but the same. I've also heard, and we have, we should look into this a little bit more, that it also depends on your crossover right. to the West. Penn State would technically have the toughest crossover um, schedule and they would all be mm. wins. Wisconsin, Iowa, and um, I mean I think Illinois is the other crossover. Right. Not that, that, but for example, the other two teams have Nebraska, who might be the worst team in the conference out on the west side. Um, Which is really interesting. Yeah. Right? So it, it there's a weird um, tiebreaker. So it's really not even out of the question yet for the Big Ten East. As good as Ohio State has looked, it's it's not um, anything can happen. Sure. I mean, we saw that two years ago. <laughs> I mean, Penn State literally got in on the last on the last day in an overtime game. Ohio State, Michigan. They needed Ohio State to win. They won. Penn State took care of business against Michigan State. The rest is history. So, bottom line is a lot can change, and and nothing is out of the out of the picture yet. So it does look like you're right in that the best cumulative conference winning percentage of non-divisional opponents would be the tiebreaker. And those three cross-conference games in this theoretical scenario, Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin for Penn State, as you mentioned, two pretty solid teams. They are the two best teams in the West, Wisconsin yeah. and Iowa. Ohio State, Minnesota, Purdue, Nebraska. They would be in a very so tough So who spot. did Ohio State have? Minnesota? Uh, Minnesota, Purdue, Purdue and Nebraska. Nebraska. Michigan, Nebraska, Northwestern, Wisconsin. So, so Ohio State common, actually has the weakest. And the common thread there is Nebraska for Ohio State and Michigan. Mm -hmm. Penn State does not play them. Simple math tells you you cheer against 
Nebraska. Simple math also tells you Michigan has to beat Ohio State eventually, right? I mean, you would think. I'm not saying, I mean, it could. I don't know could. if that's simple math. That might be probability or something. I mean, you know, rivalries usually have uh, pretty balanced uh, winning, but not lately in that one at least. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot can still happen is what I'm trying to get at. Very um, interesting. If the division, Big Ten itself, is out of the picture for Penn State, the key that I would like to focus on is Notre Dame. If we can pull their schedule yes, up, yes, of course. Uh, obviously, the wild card here, not in the division, not in the conference. They're independent. They don't have the opportunity to get that thirteenth data point conference championship. Um, but Penn State might not have that opportunity either. Um, looking at their schedule, they obviously had the big win week one against Michigan. Um, they did not look that good against Ball State and Vanderbilt, but quickly rebounded. The win against Stanford's not looking as good as it once did. Um, they struggled. They lost their last two um, to Notre Dame and also at home by about 20 to Utah. And then their win last week at Virginia Tech. Really, I mean, take it for what it's worth. I don't think Virginia Tech's that good of a team. They lost by two touchdowns to Old Dominion. They're playing with their backup quarterback. Sure, they went on the road in a hostile environment. Lane Stadium beat, beat Virginia Tech handily. Um... In the back end of their schedule, it doesn't look as as tough as it did in the beginning of the season. Yes, very um, true. Florida State underachieving this year. Southern California However, would be a different team. Syrac Syracuse is, is um, actually starting to you know play pretty good football. They've had a good season so far. And that game, I believe, is at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. The other and, the other thing is and at USC is always is always tough. And they could be a different team, JT Daniels, et cetera. A lot of young guys on that team. I think mm -hmm. that Southern Cal could propose yeah. a little bit of a. They'll be a much different team that late that late in the season. Yeah. And and I think that even the at Northwestern game on November third is something to really consider because well, clearly Northwestern is one of the craziest teams to follow in football. I mean. They'll lose to Akron and pretty and take Mich They were up, I think seventeen point seventeen nothing on Michigan, and Michigan scored twenty unanswered last week or two weeks ago last week to win. Yeah, uh, it was two weeks ago. Um, you never know what you're getting with Northwestern, and it's at Northwestern. I mean, I feel like Notre Dame is bound to lose a game. I think it's just tough to go undefeated in general in college football. Um, I don't see it being Pitt or Navy, and probably not Florida State, but the rest. A fair game. I mean, anything can truly happen. Yeah, I think that's very, very interesting. And you mentioned talking about Washington as well. We'll take a look. This is now the Washington schedule that you see on your screen. The one loss to Auburn, which is actually proving to be quite interesting, as Auburn begins to drop games. They lost and they're now number LSU. 21. They're right. 21 now, right? Lost to LSU and then lost to Joe Mo and Mississippi State. And in the time since, you know, they've taken care of business. I wouldn't call anything they've done the scores, super fresh. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in fact, I'll, I'll say this: Oregon. I think you were a little bit earlier on them than I am at slash was, but I think that's a game at Odson Stadium that I don't know that Washington gets through this weekend. Well, yeah, I mean, and you got to feel that Oregon. They're coming off. Granted, they played Stanford. I believe that was on September 22nd. Um, they played Stanford in primetime. Had the game won multiple times and threw the game away, and Stanford won that game. What kind of Oregon team, and I don't watch a lot of Oregon football West Coast, what kind of Oregon team is going to show up for this next huge game that they have at Alton Stadium? Yeah. I mean, that is that is really the question. I mean, there's a lot at stake. I mean, for the for the division – for the Pac-12 North, right. I mean, there's a lot at stake at this for this game. Um, uh, you know, as is that Colorado game. Very interesting mm -hmm. as well. You at, mentioned at, team yeah, that hasn't been Cal. tested. Cal is not terrible this year. Yeah. So I mean, you, do you think they get through that or no? I don't. I think Washington slips up a game, and it, it might not be to the big uh, Pac-12 championship. I just don't see them against whom though? Arizona State maybe at this point. Yeah, uh, probably not. I, I'm just throwing that game out there, but I I see. Who's going to come out of the South though? It's a wild. It division. is a wild. I just I'm not. I'm just saying they're probably going to go to the championship, and I'm just adding that as a game that could be a potential loss. I think they're going to lose one of their next seven, including the championship game. I'm not saying they're going to lose it, but including that game, they will lose 
one game, I, be I believe, because... Right. Let me take one more look at this with you, because let's just say they don't. Let's just say they don't okay. lose again. They have wins against, I mean, BYU. That's really not that good of a win not right now. Not a good now. win. I mean, that's, they Utah were right that high because they actually, beat Wisconsin. You know, maybe they'll get some credit because they beat Stanford. Um, I mean, they sweep by UCLA. UCLA and is terrible. nothing. Oregon, Colorado, Stanford, who, you know, is unranked at this point, at the very minimum. And then they got There's Apple Cup. There. Apple Cup, the last game of the season, is always a crazy game. So, so let's just throw this out there, right? That's the Washington schedule, and let's assume they win their conference. Great. Understood. Then you pull up this, and this is Penn State, and I understand that Appalachian State gonna is be an ranked OC soon. loss. They're going to be ranked soon. App State's going to be, be ranked. ranked You're soon, right. Very soon. Absolutely. So there's that. One point loss to one of the best teams in the country, and then let's say they rip through the rest of the schedule. They don't have the 13th data point. Let's assume that for this scenario. But they have wins against ranked Michigan, Wisconsin, Michigan State probably, if Penn State beats them, probably won't get back to ranked status by the end of the year. But you look at this, you know, is this enough for Penn State to overcome? And would they consider picking a second Big Ten team over a one-loss Washington team? Perhaps that loss came to an unranked Auburn when it's all said and done, and there wasn't a lot of meat in that schedule. I, I, is there any way? I don't think so. I think that they would go with Washington, conference championship, first loss, first game of the year, Auburn, neutral site in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, assuming that's what happens, hypothetically, I think it would just be tough to take two Big Ten teams. Ones, and I think Penn State on a neutral site would beat Washington. I think they are the better team. I mean, we obviously Solid the teams are different year. than last year. A lot of the, there's a lot of similarities there between the teams last year and this year, but um, I think you put them up. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a play-in game, but if there were, I think Penn State would would beat them. But um, I think they would probably give it to Washington if that were the scenario. I think you're probably right, but I think it would be at the very least interesting. I, it I would be Penn State fans it would, would be uh, a good debate. I think they should, you know, definitely in that case, definitely go to the television and still watch the show. Because I think there will be a chance mm -hmm. that something crazy would happen. Especially if Ohio State continues to rip through and well, beat teams by double digits. And they know that Penn State's good. <laughs> and, they, and I'm not saying they're going to pick the, the college football committee is going to base off this. But Penn State's good TV. Every game that they are in national TV, it's, they might not win them all, but they're down the wire. For sure. And, um, yeah, when's the last time they lost a game big? <laughs> I mean, everything... Whether they're winning or losing on national television, it's coming. Generally, it's coming down the wire. I mean, you go yeah. back to Iowa last year, right. the Rose Bowl. I mean, the last every game, game, the last game they lost big was Michigan. Right. And Two weeks before this three-year run yeah, started. Yeah. And and I mean, they lost since Michigan four games, yeah. eight total points. Yeah. All games they had a fourth quarter lead. That's right. I mean, it's a tough pill to swallow, but they're they're good TV. That they know what they're getting. I mean, I think it would be crazy, total hypothetical, if they net up with, if they place them against Ohio State in the college football playoff. If if the situation will arise, I mean, that would, well, that would sure. be absolutely must-watch television, I, I whether or not you even like football. You but. could absolutely see a scenario where that happens. Yeah, because if there's we look definitely again, a scenario. If we look at this top... Who wouldn't want to see that game again? Well, that is top ten right now, right? So Ohio State... I think no matter what, if they go unbeaten, we'll be ahead of Clemson and we'll be ranked ahead of them. So then it's Alabama and Georgia. So let's say that Alabama slips up somewhere in the SEC West and then beats Georgia. And they choose to put both of them in. Well, that could be, be tough for Penn State. But at the very minimum, let's say Alabama loses... You know, maybe loses one in the regular season and then Georgia beats them. So Alabama's then out. Georgia would probably still at that point be ahead of Ohio State. But, you know, Clemson's in the mix, Notre Dame's in the mix. If Ohio State could get to that number one spot, which I believe is possible, Penn State could absolutely slide in that fourth spot. The scary thing for Penn State, though, to look back at this one more time, is even if Alabama and Georgia play one another and the loser does not qualify for the college football playoff, 
There's still Ohio State. There's still Clemson. We're assuming they're undefeated. And then they're, there's Notre Dame. Dame. You could absolutely and even a Big Twelve and even a Big Twelve team. West I mean, Virginia. West undefeated. Virginia runs the table. They're in. You absolutely. know what I mean? So I don't see that happening. Yeah. But like I said, the pack, the Big Twelve is probably the toughest conference actually to run the table in. If you, um, because, so you're gonna have to. Chances are you're gonna have to beat one of the best teams twice. That is hard to do. In the Big Ten, okay, you don't enough. necessarily. I mean, Penn State, like if it's Ohio State and Wisconsin, they haven't played the whole season, so it wouldn't be that hard for Ohio State. My argument is to beat them in the Big Ten championship once, as it would be to beat them twice. If they played them, beat them in regular yeah, season. I, I, I mean, I just think it's tough to beat a team. I get the twice, point you, you know. Yeah. So I think that def, that's you know another reason. To, the Big 12 is going to shot themselves in the foot. Now, <laughs> you, you could argue, right, okay, the Big 10 isn't that way. You could also argue then that the it uh, could divisions... Be, it could be that way, though. The divisions if are you, not properly right. margined. Very true. But, you know, it's, it's an interesting discussion. As we go through all these different teams, Penn State's pathway, one more time at the top 10 here, you know, everybody above them... I think has a legitimate claim to one being ranked higher than Penn State, and then two, if they were to run the table, be in the college football playoff ahead of Penn State. The only question I have for you is: there anybody lower than Penn State? If Penn State runs the table, that could jump Penn State. Clearly, well, that takes all the Big Ten teams out of the equation. I think it takes. Well, if maybe, LSU, maybe other... if LSU runs the table, they'll they'll jump. I mean. Because if you look at LSU's remaining schedule, Alabama, they have, they'd have, to put they have Georgia there. this week. And this is why I don't think they're going to run the table and they're going to be out of the conversation sooner rather than later. Georgia this week at home. Next week at home, Mississippi State. Then they do have a bye, and then they host Alabama. Three ranked games in a row, all in Death Valley. Okay, There's a chance there. And then they close the season. So you like that then? As a Penn State fan, you like that all three of those games are in Death Valley. If I'm an LSU fan, I like it. If you're a Penn State fan, you like it. Well, not necessarily, because if they run the table, which even though I don't think they will, I think they'll probably have another loss. Um, if they run the table, they would jump Penn State. My point is, if they run the table, they win the SEC West. Alabama is out of the mix. Yes, then you would. Like, they would play Georgia in the SEC championship game. One of those you, teams would one win. One of those teams uh, yes, would lose. Penn State, and they would bounce the SEC Penn State down to just one fans team. Fans should be cheering for LSU, in my opinion. Yes, and <laughs> but then they end the season at A and M, and they've been playing pretty well. There are two losses to Alabama and Clemson. Yeah. So I mean, I guess what you really want is Alabama and Georgia to lose to LSU, and then Mississippi State to beat LSU. Too bad it's not the NFL where there can be ties. I yeah. mean, <laughs> that would really throw a wrinkle in it. Um, Very interesting. Yeah, and and obviously a lot to still talk about. Um, every week it's going to change. Yeah, I don't think this will be the last time no. we do this. It's been a good discussion, though. It, it's it. been a great discussion. So, um, anything else? Any parting shots from you? Um. I mean, I if you want, I would like to go over some some games this week yeah. and and you know keys for Penn State. I don't know which one you'd want to go over. For. I mean, we can do keys for Penn State. Go for it. Um, I think the keys for Penn State, obviously, it's homecoming. It's a stripe out. Um, it's a week. You know, it's it's been a long two weeks, uh, really. As a, as a fan, I'm sure it's been like that for the coaches and the players uh, since that loss uh, to Ohio State, which is was tough to swallow. Um, it's, it, it really depends what kind of team you're going to see with Penn State come out. Uh, they're f by far the better team than Michigan State. Yeah. Michigan State's banged up. I think the key for Penn State is going to be to start fast. I know it sounds cliche, but if you can start fast and really build the momentum, I mean, there's not going to be much looking back. If you start slow and you can't score touchdowns like was the case against Ohio State early in the game, I mean, they had a great chance to put Ohio State away early. It could have been 21 nothing at the half save for a couple things. Um, if you can put up touchdowns early on, stop Michigan State. I mean, they, they're a team that could they could fold. I mean, they haven't got off to the best start. Injured players. Um, so I think that is the, the, vet, the, the main keys, jumping out to them. Receivers have to step up. I mean, still the drops have been um, disappointing, to say the least, but Michigan State very vulnerable in the pass game. So look for Trace to shine. Um, I also expect another big game from him on the ground. 
even though Michigan State is so good defensively stopping the run, when he drops back the pass, his pass, his, his running lanes also open up mm -hmm. um, as the coverage is so worried about him airing the ball out. So, My key is defense for Penn State, and most specifically the secondary and the cornerbacks. Being able to stay with these receivers, you have a high-quality quarterback in Brian Lewerke. Mm -hmm. You have a restructured Penn State defensive line, as we've talked about all year. Shane Simmons is back. Yeah, he's back. That's a key. That's, that is a key. How do you get to Brian Lewerke? But more importantly, can the cornerback core and also the secondary be able to press cover receivers and make tackles yes. in the open field? Tackling, definitely key. Um, one of the reasons they lost to Iowa State. Yes, fourth 100%. quarter. Defense was phenomenal until the fourth quarter. Yep. And then... With eight minutes left, they couldn't tackle. They couldn't cover. I mean, it's really nothing Ohio State did. It's what Penn State didn't do. And and, and that is why, ultimately, they cost them the game. Penn State under James Franklin's um, pretty good coming after bye weeks, actually. So I, I like that. And um, uh, They're pretty good, generally speaking, under James Franklin. They don't lose many games, they, period. Right, but after a bye week, um, last year the bye week came before the Michigan game. Um, yep. And we all know what happened in that game. They won by about 30. So 29. Remember that wrinkle? Oh, we're going to have a wrinkle. Yeah. And they, the direct snap yeah. to Saquon Barkley. So, and, and we'll see. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any wrinkles this week. But um, I think that Penn State, I think they're about a 14.5 point favorite right now, last I, last I heard. I think, th I think they not only win the game, but I think they cover the spread too. I think you're probably looking at about a... 17 point win, like 34 17. I like that. I think that's 17 points. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I, I do like that as a score. You can even say they're doubling um, them up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think they will. Um, home game, like I said, all the reasons I already stated. But. All right. So, what else you got then? You want to. Uh... Um, we can go through some other key games this week, um, specifically in the, the playoff picture, as we all talked right. about. Um, pretty good slate. Um, Pitt at Notre Dame is a game that watch, um, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because Pitt, it seems like every year, wins One a game. game they shouldn't, um, and it's usually gets a top 10 team. I don't see it. I don't see it either. I'm going Notre Dame. Um, Pitt also just lost their middle linebacker for the rest of the season. Where's uh, Janice? We're Janice, yes. Yeah, Quentin Moore Janice. Yeah, so I, I don't... Fox Chapel High School, local, Pittsburgh. Yeah, local to Pittsburgh, right. Yeah. Um... I don't see Pitt win. It might be close for a half. It seems like when teams go to Notre Dame Stadium, they they really like get hype and play up to Notre Dame a lot. I mean, you see with Ball State Vanderbilt. So yeah, um, I think they'll probably last about half, but that's that's probably it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going Notre Dame there. Agreed. Three thirty CBS, Georgia at LSU. Now this is this is an interesting one. I really think I like Georgia in this game to win it. Uh, I get it. There's something about LSU, right? But they they're coming off a tough loss to Florida. I mean, and yeah. you just never know what you're getting with LSU. Yeah. Especially with an Ed Orgeron team. I mean, you just never know what you're getting. And, they really and should quite, have lost that game. Quite frankly, Georgia, yeah, they won at South Carolina week two. They killed them, and South Carolina's decent. I know what you're saying. They, they haven't. Anybody. And they're, so, uh, you know, they haven't. Uh, and you like, you like Georgia... I am gonna go. All right, do it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go, and of course my thing's screwing up right now. But I'm gonna go LSU. All right. I think it's really gonna. I think. I think it's gonna be a pretty crazy weekend. Wow. And this isn't just wishful thinking. I mean, they are. Georgia is seven and a half point favorites. Um, wow. They they are the better team, but I, I don't know. I think LSU is due for a big home win, and. Um, Okay. I think they're gonna catch LSU or catch Georgia at a good time. I'd be surprised, but I look forward to. We will see. see it's also a three thirty game as well as Penn State Michigan State. Yeah. So I can't. I don't know how much I'll really be paying attention to it. Two TVs, man. Yeah. Trust so, me, it works. Well, I'm gonna be camping this week, uh, so um, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna two have cell a, phones. I'm gonna have a way to have it on. Um, there is a cable outlet, but I don't know if they have the Big Ten Network. They will get CBS, so it'll probably be on that TV, and I'll probably be watching. Penn State on on the iPad here or nice laptop thing. or something, but it will be it will be watched. Um, okay, little disagreement there on that game. 
It's all good and fun. It is good and fun. Um, let's go another 330 ABC. So we may need three TVs now. Yeah, I think so. Washington at Oregon. Oregon outright. I like the Ducks outright. I, I do too. Watson Stadium. I, I do too. Um, you know, I like I mentioned for the reasons earlier, hungry from the last loss. Um, three point favorites is Washington. It's it's, it's going to be a close one, I and mean, I think Oregon's going to is going to pull it off. And it's an Oregon line, dude. And they might even and it, they, they would jump the first place in the Pac-12 North. A lot at stake here. Yeah, um, I like him outright. Tough place to play. Tough place. And, and good team. And then Washington's coming off of another road game at UCLA. Yeah. Um, no, a lot impressive. Of, unimpressive. A right. lot of traveling going on. I think Oregon gets them. I do. Um, right. I agree. And that would ultimately eliminate Washington. the Huskies. And um, probably the Pac-12. Probably. Okay. Not Colorado. If Colorado wins out. Not going to happen, but yes, yeah. you're right. Um, prime time, 730 ABC. Interesting one. Big Ten. Penn State fans will be mm -hmm. watching closely. Wisconsin, yeah. 15 at number 12, Michigan. Yeah, I think I think that I like Wisconsin here. I still trust them. I know they have a lot of questions about Alex Hornibrook at the quarterback situation. Jonathan Taylor still a stud. They're still going to run the ball down your throat. The defense is going to do enough. And Michigan still, still figuring themselves out. And having long stretches of games, Tyler, where they can't figure out and can't get out of their own way. I'm going Michigan. Um, I, I think that certainly could be eight and a half point favorites at home. Um, and I'm not one to look at I the am line. Surprised. Why? Why is that the line? I don't know. They're very similar teams. I don't know why that's the line either. Um, Vegas knows. Vegas knows. I, I, and I'm not one to look at a line much when I pick games, but I that's just think tell that, you something. I think that Michigan is. I think they're just. I mean, I think they're due for a win like this. And my question to you is, as Penn State fans, with a lot of Penn State listeners on here, two teams Penn State is going to play down the road. Who would Penn State want to win? I'm going to ask you a question, but I'm also going to answer it before I give hand it over. I would think Michigan. Definitely. Because we're in the same division, and if there is a three-way tie. Okay. That's the reason, okay. without a doubt. I think without a doubt, you need Michigan to win this football game. It would also game be because, ranked higher as well. Because they've already lost. And, and, it, and chances are, when Penn State goes to Michigan, if Michigan wins this, if you're looking at two top ten Well, Penn State teams. needs to win out, right? Yeah. No matter what. It, regardless of who wins that game. Wisconsin so. has the one loss. If they lose here, they're, they're obviously out of the picture. If they lose the Big Ten Championship game, they'd definitely be out of the picture. Right. Michigan already has the loss in Notre Dame. If we're assuming that Penn State needs to win out, then they beat Michigan, and Michigan now has the two losses, even after this win against yep. Wisconsin. And, and, no reason, absolutely no reason to uh, cheer for anything but Michigan to win that game. That's so tough to do, though. Uh, but I, I think that Michigan wins. I think it's probably by about three to four points. I don't think it's eight eight. Um, nine actually would be, but can't believe I guess with seeing the line, but I guess I'm going Wisconsin outright. All right, I can't. I, <laughs> it feels like a pick 'em game to me. There, but. there you have it. Um, well, another one I guess we could do is Colorado 10:30 at USC. 19 Colorado at USC. Um, this I'll is go Colorado. you're going Colorado on that. Um, I could see it going the other way easily. I mean that is that's a complete toss up to me. Uh, actually, USC seven point favorites. Yeah. Um, but do you trust that team at all? I, I don't. But I, I, I would actually go USC in this game. Yeah. Um, I think that um, Colorado is just simply due for a loss. Level of competition hasn't been there. USC, regardless of the record, is always going to have talent on their team. Right. And um, I'm going to go upset of the week. Again, a lot of this is wishful thinking on Penn State's behalf. I am going to go Iowa State over West Virginia. It is a 7 o'clock start in Ames, Iowa. I don't like that pick. I know why you're picking it. It seems every it year Iowa happen. State gets somebody. Yep. They're only six and a half point dogs. Yeah, I hear you. Um, don't like that pick. But it could happen. That, I don't know. I, I like that West Virginia team. You know I picked them to be in the you did. football uh, playoff. Do you have an upset that you want to take a look at? Oh, or man. Some... You, you need me to take an upset? I guess I picked Wisconsin, right? Apparently that's I, yeah, I guess it is an upset. But That's crazy. I, I mean, I think that 
Campbell, the coach out at uh, Iowa State, is a tremendous mm -hmm. coach. He's probably not going to be there much longer before his name's called for a different job. Uh, but I, I think that that's just one of those games that it's going to happen. I mean, I feel like it happens once a year Iowa State beats somebody. Last year they went down to I Oklahoma. Yeah. Beat Oklahoma. It's just like... It, it never fails with them. And we got places. Matt Rule, Baylor beating Texas. No. That would be crazy, I, I huh? Don't, I don't think so. No, but I don't think so either. I guess on my, my episode was Oregon as well. Okay. So I, I got nothing yeah. else. Got nothing for you. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's, that's so all what I you got? got. Yeah, that's what I got. Good stuff. Enjoyed the round table here. It was kind of a more relaxing setting here tonight without the, the headphones and the microphone. Definitely but, different. Uh, but... But it's always a good discussion, nonetheless. And good to be back. Yes. After two weeks two, away. Two week bye. Yes, indeed. That was in, our, that was in the schedule, though, so That's it's right. all good. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you guys next week. It'll be after the game against Michigan State. Then we'll be back on to recap that game next week and also to preview Indiana as well as probably make – some light update, make, update make some, the playoff picture. No doubt. I think that's probably going to be a weekly thing. And that will be a big change, I think. A lot of big games this week. There will be some changes. So. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good week. We'll see you guys next time.